I'm Rita Gakati Shah, your host for The Uma Show. Welcome to your one-stop journey for feeling empowered. We are a platform for change. We build confidence. We are your voice. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma. Today, we're exploring diversity and inclusion in the pharmaceutical and global healthcare industry. And I'm so excited to be joined by our goddess of go-getting, Arpa Gare, who is the president of Global Pharmaceuticals, Commercial Analytics, and Digital Marketing and Merck and Co. globally. Welcome, Arpa. Thank you, Rita. It's great to be here. And thanks for hosting me. Oh, absolutely. So I absolutely love your background. You have literally traveled all over the world. You've lived in five countries and visited 70. Oh my gosh. Um, what were your early childhood memories like? Yeah, it's fascinating because um, by the age of nine um, was when uh, my parents came home one day and told us that we were moving to India. So uh, from the US. So as you can imagine, it was a big sort of cultural shock for my brother and I um, moving from one side of the world to the other. But um, over the years, uh, they did move us around. We lived in several different countries. And you know, from a memory perspective, I just remember being so excited to learn about different cultures, different people, different foods, different languages. Um, and also um, over time developed almost a curiosity to learn about new places yeah. um, and, and an agility to make new friends, right? Because um, the more you move, the more you're sort of starting over. So uh, my early memories are fascinating. Yes. I think it's, they've stuck with me um, throughout the rest of my life. It's amazing. And it kind of really shapes you, doesn't it? Your early childhood years. <laughs> I love that. And then along, along the time, you actually found yourself then in Boston, uh, where you actually attended MIT. You started off focusing on medicine, public health and public policy, didn't you? But then you ended up graduating economics. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so ever since I was young, I was always interested in health and medicine. Mm -hmm. um, I think at probably by high school, I had this sort of broad philosophy that cultures and families and communities thrive based on education or health, actually the combination of the two. And with my math and science bent, I decided I was going to work in healthcare. Um, I went all in and did my pre-medicine at MIT. Um, and along the way, actually, one of uh, we have very strict requirements at MIT to do some humanities courses. So I picked economics, which is a little bit of cheating because it was a lot of math. Um, <laughs> and during my experience there, just, you know, phenomenal public uh, figures and professors. Um, and I got really interested in the space of sort of influencing health from an economic and a public health perspective. So that's where I made the shift. Um, really inspired by people like Paul Krugman and Jonathan Gruber and others that would talk about how policy can really shape um, public health for millions of people instead of individual people. That's amazing. And it's also amazing how like, you know, somebody who speaks can actually inspire you to change your mind or go in a certain direction, isn't it? So I exactly. love that. Yeah. Um, so really that then spurred you to start a career in management consulting um, and then seemingly you ended up taking a 180 degree pivot to the pharmaceutical world. Um, tell us a bit about that and what spurred that change. Yeah, so um, I went into management consulting actually inspired by a professor who um, convinced me not to go directly into the public sector. Um, and his guidance was basically, you know, start in consulting, get that sort of solid base and that solid training, which I think was actually very, very good advice. Um, mm -hmm. And while I was in consulting, I had expressed an interest in healthcare. So yeah. I spent a lot of my years and time working in the life sciences space, biotech, pharma. Um, and I also did other industries, but I realized my real passion was in healthcare. Um, and then about five years in, I started getting recruiting calls. And what really changed my mind to go into industry was I wanted to be accountable, right? So mm -hmm. as a consultant, I gave a lot of advice, um, but I didn't actually get to make the decisions, I didn't get to actually implement the decisions, and I was never fully held accountable for the results. So I thought, why not give it a try? Uh, worst case, if I hate it, I can always go back into consulting or something else. So um, I took the dive. I love that. And because you actually had a passion for it, you did it for a few years, you said, you know what, how do I actually make a change? I'm talking about these and policies and writing things, but what do I actually do about it? That's really inspiring. Um, so then you kind of, that took you to Bristol Myers Squibb. Um, 
um, where you did a bit of a stint there, didn't you? And then that really almost paved the way for you moving across to Merck, where you've worked across multiple therapeutic areas and geographies. Um, tell us a bit about your current role um, as president of Global Pharmaceuticals, Commercial Analytics and Digital Marketing. Absolutely. So it's um, it's probably one of the longest titles I've ever held. <laughs> so um, it's a mouthful. Actually, yeah, essentially, I would say my role is um, twofold. Uh, one is I spend a lot of my time on global pharmaceutical marketing. So it's really thinking about, um, you know, bringing in new compounds, business development, also thinking about future launches of drugs and where we want to invest our resources to really get you know, um, to therapeutic areas and medicines that can really make a difference around the world. So we spent a lot of time thinking about you know, which, which areas need more medicines. Um, how do we think about getting access around the world? What is our pricing strategy? And what's our broader marketing plan? Um, the second part of my job is um, commercial analytics, digital marketing, and partnerships. And these are really more sort of core capabilities we're trying to build in the company. Um, and really service not just global sort of um, marketing and headquarters, but also all the countries around us. So thinking about how do we use data better and more efficiently to make better decisions? How do we partner with people outside of our own company um, to get our medicines and vaccines uh, more broadly out there? Um, and how do we pivot our business model to be more digital, right? So um, it's a fascinating sort of combination of roles um, and learning something new every single day. So it's been great. No, absolutely. And I can actually really um, feel for that because when I was in the healthcare industry, I was on the other side. So I would be on the service provider side looking at, you know, speaking to companies like Merck or BMS um, about single detection and those trials. So coming in from the other side of the efficiency, right. so completely understand it from that perspective. Um, so in your role, you also advise governments as well, and you've collaborated with global policymakers and led US vaccines, haven't you? Um, Obviously, it's very topical right now, um, COVID's um, strategy, especially with Merck. Any clues or insights into what Merck might be planning on the vaccine front there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Merck is actually the largest vaccines manufacturer in the world, right? Uh, we're also a leader in infectious diseases. So I'd say from the outset of the pandemic, um, Everyone at Merck has been very, very focused on really trying to figure out how we can be part of the solution, how we can really make a difference um, and leveraging partnerships where it makes sense. Um, so from a company perspective, we're currently exploring two vaccines candidates. Um, our focus from the beginning has been really trying to find vaccines, science and platforms that are proven. So we have um, an acquisition that we made of Themis and then a partnership with Iavi, which is a global uh, partner of ours for a second vaccine. Our hope, obviously, you know, we're going through clinical studies and there's more to be learned, but our hope is that uh, we would have a single dose effective vaccine so that it's actually um, allows us to vaccinate more people in a, in a simpler regimen. Um, the intent would be to launch next year sometime, depending on the data. Yeah. And then we also have a collaboration for therapeutics. So that's the other end that we're playing in to see, you know, is there a medicine that can actually keep people out of the hospital and can really lessen the disease burden around the world. So that's another space we're really, really excited about. And I love that because you're actually going in from two angles that one is like, you know, prevention in the future, but what is it? What do you do now? How do we kind exactly. of get people out of the hospitals? How can we kind of fix them from home, so to speak? Exactly. So I love that fact that you're looking at that. And do you have a timeline for that as well? Therapeutic side? Yeah, also that's also in the in the clinical trials, um, but we're anticipating 2021 for both. Right, which yeah. is pretty quick actually. So uh, fingers Very crossed nice. that things get going, absolutely, yeah. Um, so I love that. Um, so to get to where you are, you, I mean, you are a very senior woman in a predominantly male dominated industry. Um, talk to us a bit about your, um, your path to leadership, not just as a woman, but as a woman of color. Yep. Yeah, you know, it's fascinating. And I think as I reflect on my career, it's really hard to tease apart um, where it has mattered or has not mattered. Um, but I would say there's two things that have always resonated with me. One is just always being focused on driving results um, because results will speak for themselves and they're more sort of that objective measure of success. Um, 
the second piece and sort of guidance that I've always taken with me is always, I always assume good intent, right? Um, right. I think in general, people assume all the right things. Um, but the advice that I've taken for myself and also given to others is, but don't let people assume on your behalf, right? So if you've got aspirations, you've got things that you're interested in, you've got capabilities that you want to build, um, it's really important to articulate those, right? Um, so an example I'll give is, you know, when I was interested in becoming a managing director, um, I actually spoke about it and said, you know, I'm well, I've spoken to my husband. Um, I have three children. I think, especially when you're a mother, people assume you have children, you're going to make different choices. And, you know, I spoke up and said, my family's willing to move to another country. We're ready to go. You know, this is something that I'm interested in. And I think being clear on sort of aspirations really helped because oftentimes people assume that you may or may not be interested in opportunities right. and in the long run can really slow down your career. So um, yeah. I think for me, that's been the most important is just be very clear on your aspirations and continue to stay focused on driving results. Absolutely. And I love that because there's that saying that, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. So it's very much like, you know, people don't just know the answer. You have to actually tell them. Um, and I love that that as well. You know, and Uma as well, that's very much the philosophy that we follow as well, that, you know, you have to drive yourself forward. At the end of the day, you are your best advocate. Um, mm -hmm. So I love that, you know, um, but you also equally you're passionate about diversity and inclusion as well. Um, talk to us a bit about how you're managing to build and inspire diverse and talented teams at Merck. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's very, very sort of basic, right? Uh, we work at a global company. Our mission is to provide medicines and vaccines to as many people around the world as we can. So I always start with the basics of if we don't reflect the customers and the patients that we serve, we will never be as successful, right? We won't be as relevant. We won't understand where they're coming from. We won't be able to talk to them in a way that um, will inspire people to take care of their health. And so I try to always start with that premise of we've got to reflect the, the populations that we serve. And that's not only good from a mission and a humanistic perspective, but it also, there's a lot of research that shows it also drives results, right? So that's sort of my call to action within my own teams. Um, I'll say that the second piece is really around holding people accountable. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I hold myself accountable to build diverse and inclusive teams. Um, I spend a lot of time gathering feedback on what's working, what's not working. Um, and I do ask questions of those who are on my team around you know, if I feel like they're, they don't have diverse teams, you know, what drove that? Is there something we can do to, to increase the diversity? So I think, um, you know, that accountability piece is as important um, in addition to really the case for change so that people really see why it's more critical in my mind in healthcare really than in most other industries. Absolutely, because you are dealing with people from around the world. So you see the results yeah. immediately. So I agree with you, you know, the accountability, but also kind of understanding why you're doing it. You know, there's so many leaders out there that do it just for number's sake, but don't actually understand the meaning and how it actually makes a difference. But, you know, having that is, I think it's great. So, so well done on taking that forward. Um, now just to pivot a little bit, um, you mentioned you obviously you're a mother of three children. You have a little puppy as well. So child number four. <laughs> Um, tell us a bit about, you know, balancing your career with motherhood and, and your family. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a journey. Um, <laughs> you know, I, st I started working when I had no children. And now, as you mentioned, I'm up to almost four, three children and a puppy. Um, you know, I think for me, it's been a lot about um, timing and the journey, yeah. right? So there have been times where I have said no to opportunities that have come to me because at that time in my life, I wasn't interested in a lot of travel. I wasn't interested in certain types of um, work. Um, but it, I've always sort of reassessed, of course, working with my husband and my family, you know, when am I ready for certain opportunities? So it's never a yes or a no forever. It's always a taking a pause and thinking about what works for me now, what works for the family yeah. now, and how do we balance that? Um, the other thing that I will emphasize and say to everyone that will listen is, um, 
my children have two parents, right? So they have a they have a mother and they have a father. So my husband and I are absolutely, you know, 100% engaged uh, with our children. It is a very 50-50 partnership. So um, I've also really taken it upon myself to not have that guilt of, you know, I'm on a business trip for the next three days because I know they're in great hands, right? They're with right. my father. Okay. So yeah. we absolutely trade off. We balance. Um, they're, you know, he takes them to the pediatrician sometimes. Sometimes I take them sometimes. Um, and it's, it's a very, very important, I would say, uh, partnership that has enabled me to, to do the yeah. things that I've done and take the opportunities that I've taken. No, absolutely. And I just love that because it is a partnership. And unless we make it 50-50, it doesn't become that way. You know, and also what you've mentioned is that when you've made these different decisions about careers to take up and opportunities not to, you've discussed it with your husband and family too. So it shows that this is a universal decision. This is your support network, ultimately. If you let people into your life, they're part of your support network as well. So I love that. You know, um, you know, I, same here, you know, drop off, pick up, traveling and whatnot. It is an equal thing, whether it's your mother and, or father. I think the kids, from their perspective, they see us as being equals in that spectrum, which is so, so important for them so I totally love that um so also you've um, you've achieved so much um truly remarkable um and you've been recognized in so many ways for your leadership as well in particular in fortune's most powerful women next generation business insiders global top 30 under 40 in biopharma and philadelphia business journal's top 40 under 40 business leaders wow that's a mouthful and incredible so congratulations um tell us a little bit more about that and and what's what's next on the horizon for you yeah, so um, you know the the all the under forties, unfortunately, are now behind me because I am now over forty. But um, you know, it was it was really I would say humbling and exciting to be part of some of these uh, recognitions um, and really sort of pushing forward the agenda of you know how do we ensure better and equitable healthcare um, as much as we can play from a Merck perspective going forward. Um, in terms of what's next for me, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> You know, again, as I mentioned, for me, it's all about, you know, finding those opportunities where I feel like I can make a difference, uh, finding the teams around me where I can make a difference to the teams and the culture. Um, and then also being in a position where I'm learning new things every day and meeting new people, whether it's governments or policymakers, um, and continuing to develop myself in that way. So um, it's been a great journey. Um, I've been very humbled by the recognition, um, yeah. but I continue to stay focused on my original sort of intent of making a difference where I can. No, that's amazing. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And it's so inspirational for those folks out there that want to aspire to be to be what you you've done as well so just on that note to end i guess um what advice would you give um to our viewers today uh, who are looking really to follow in your footsteps of you know public health policy and, and leadership yeah yeah so i'll start by saying you know just pivoting on your introduction i'd start by saying be bold um, <laughs> always start with what you think could be possible and let other people tell you why it can't versus starting, you know, with sort of a less, um, less ambitious proposition, whether it's for yourself or for your business or for, for your company. Um, so for me, being bold is really, really important. Um, I think the other piece, which is very relevant and related is, um, you know, take risks, take chances. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know everything. Um, believe in yourself to be able to learn it. Um, I think one of the best analogies I heard earlier in my career was if you have one strong eye and you have one weak eye, you're only going to develop your weak eye if you cover the strong one, right? right? So if you're really good at something, leverage that, but then start focusing on building the things that you're not good at so that you're continuing to develop yourself and your skill set. Um, and related to that, I would say, you know, which is, again, the premise of this show is take it upon yourself, right? Sign up for courses, ask for guidance, um, talk to people outside of your company for feedback and advice. Um, because a lot of sort of careers and journeys are about learning and investing in yourself as well. So be bold, take risks and <laughs> really invest in learning, I would say, is um, the advice I would give to anyone out there. I love that. Thank you so much, Arpa, for sharing your incredible journey with us today. Arpa Gare, 
president of Global Pharmaceuticals, Commercial Analytics and Digital Marketing at Merck. And thank you to our viewers for joining on this empowerment journey today. We want you all to embrace the inner goddess of go-getting. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma.